Hi there, everybody. This is Jeremy Siskind. Um, I am the author of the Jazz Piano Fundamentals, book two, book three, book one, and playing solo jazz piano. And uh, you could order yours right now. In fact, I mistakenly, erroneously have a couple packages waiting to go out right here. That could be you. You play your cards right. Uh, first of all, welcome to my new studio. We're still working on decoration and everything, um, but uh, this is the first video here, hopefully the first of many. And today I'm going to teach something that I think I've taught probably multiple times before on this channel, but like to me, it's the number one thing I'm that I'm probably going to make you do if you take a lesson with me, and if I can't hear the harmony really clearly in your improvisation. And um, so to put this shortly, I'm going to ask you to play a three, five, seven, nine arpeggio over each chord in time. And so I brought the tune one note samba to demonstrate. And so I said three, five, seven, nine arpeggio. And so for this D minor seven, it would be F A C E. And I like to practice this in a rhythm that's eighth, 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 eighth. And then, you know, if you only have one chord per measure, then you'll tie it over into, uh, you'll tie it over into a half note. So let me play you these first eight measures. One, two, well, this is a samba. One, two, one, two, three, four. that we have this B7 flat five, because I think, yeah, if you have a flat five in the chord symbol, then you could also use that flat five as you are um, you know, playing your exercise. So instead of D sharp, F sharp, A, C sharp, I think you're totally cleared to go E sharp, F sharp, uh, sorry, E sharp, oh, what am I saying? D sharp, F natural, <laughs> and then D, F, wow. D sharp, F natural. A, C sharp. So you're welcome to do that in your practice. Okay, hear how that works? And similarly, if you want, you could, you know, go ahead and add some alterations to these dominant chords. So we might put a flat nine on this D flat seven or something like that. to the next chord progression. And there's two new things to experience in this exercise here. So first of all, we have a measure where we have two chords in the measure. And so if we're doing that, I would just do. So now we're playing the two in eighth notes, but without any tied over half note. And then in this measure with a sixth chord, right? That's something else that we haven't encountered. We'll just go three, five. And when we have a six chord, the six replaces the seven. Three, five, six, nine. Okay, so in this case, it would be D, F, G, and C. So let me play, uh, now I'm gonna play from the second set of eight measures. understanding the basics of the exercise. So let me back up as to why I think this is like an exercise that I want all of my students to be able to do on any tune that they would play. So first of all, arpeggios are what really are going to define a chord, right? Leaping between chord tones is what's going to form that strong connection between your improvisation and the chord progression, the underlying chord progression. Um, why three, five, seven, nine and not one, three, five, seven. Well, it, we're going to have more color, including the ninth, rather than the root. That's number one. 
Second of all, it's great to practice putting the third on the downbeat because the third creates harmony against the root. So a lot of times as I'm doing this exercise or asking my students to do this exercise, I'll have them play the root in their left hand so they can hear. the harmony that's being created between the third being on the downbeat and then these other th uh, three notes that are all providing color as well as focus in the harmony. Lastly, I like that this, um, that this exercise ends on the and of two. So we get to practice ending this phrase with a syncopation, right? If you know the Charleston rhythm, which is beats one and the and of two, this uh, the rhythm of this exercise matches up really nicely with the Charleston. So let's go to the bridge of this tune now. So starting on E flat minor seven. And when I have the same chord for two measures, I just repeat like that. All right, so here's a C minor seven flat five. And so I'm just going to take that same exercise, but I'll, I'll flat the five. I'm going to go E flat, G flat, B flat, and D. Continuing on. believer that you should be able to do that like way faster than you actually want to play the tune so that you just have those ready to go. So I'm always doing it in time with the metronome um, and you know we want to get that up to the tempo of the tune but you know even faster. Let's see. I got it at 220 now. Up to 250. Let's just make sure I can do it there. Two, oh, two, two, two. Two, two, idea. You want to be able to just do this absolutely automatically without thinking. Now, what are some of the next steps? So I have kind of two directions that I want to send you. I really have more than two. Um, so the first one is, you know, one of the things that makes this one note samba such a great example, and actually, let me show you this. Is it working? It's not working. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. This is going great, guys. Everything's going just fine. Oh, it's because it's not attached. Okay, I'll show you a different way. Um, so in this first line, your chords, your 3, 5, 7 minor pressures are moving very slowly. So smoothly, I should say, not slowly. Just watch my hand. And notice that's because the roots of the chords are moving very smoothly as well, right? Um, they're moving just by half step, not by anything more than that. Now, later in the tune, and here I'll highlight in green, when we have a two, five, one, when we move, you know, big distances in the circle of fifths, my hand really has to jump a lot from one chord to the next. So um, one way that you can avoid that is by making the arpeggios based on a guide tone line rather than always starting with the third. So how would that work? So let's start uh, in this green line. So we get to start on the third, 
a flat. And then here, instead of starting with a third, we can put the seventh on bottom, and we can make an arpeggio based on the seventh. Probably something like seven, nine, three, five. If you know your four note voicings, by the way, this probably looks a lot like your four note voicings, like your four note one-handed voicing. And then again, we can go back down to G, that's gonna be the third, third, seventh, third. And then again, to make it smooth, we wanna start the next one on G flat. So we're gonna go nine, seven, three, five, or maybe if we're feeling frisky, nine, seven, three, 13. Right. Or looked at another way, we could do a tritone sub for these dominant chords to make it really nice and smooth. So instead of doing a B flat seven, we could do an E seven. Instead of doing an A flat seven, we could do a D seven. Now the roots of the chord move by half step from F to E to E flat to D. Okay. Now I said I had two ways that I wanted to show you. So that's the first thing is that, you know, when you have motion in the circle of fifths, which is really quite frequently uh, in a lot of jazz music, then you can um, move by step instead, either by thinking guide to the lines or thinking about tritone substitutions. So that's one side. The other side is to use those hand positions that you're creating from the three, five, seven, nine to improvise. So instead of simply playing the exercise, right, play. Definitely it's limiting, but think about creating different phrasing, sometimes connecting two of the groups into phrases, sometimes playing just one measure phrases but making the rhythm more intricate. And then you could even introduce some lower chromatic lower neighbors instead of just could be. This is not, of course, 100% of what improvising is, but it's a really good way to sound good on a tune fast and to sound really strongly harmonically connected to the content of the tune. So if you ever come and have a lesson with me, and I hope that you do, um, either in person in my new studio or, uh, or online, um, try, make sure you can do that exercise because that'll get us uh, to where we want to go faster. So thank you so much for watching, even though this was a slightly weird, distracted video. Um, if you enjoyed that, you're probably gonna like both, particularly books one and book two of the Jazz Piano Fundamental Series. I'm holding up book three, but imagine I'm holding up book two. There it is. Um, those will be really good ones that will go along well with uh, this activity. They both have some references to this kind of improvisation practice. Thanks for watching. Uh, comment with the word studio if you've made it all the way to the end. I'll see y'all soon.